Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and the topic and title of this video is about which roses not to deadhead, but I should start out with a quick one minute review of what is deadheading and why do you do it. Deadheading is the process of removing spent blooms on your roses. So if you were looking at solitary blooming roses, the ones that bloom just one on the end of the stem, it might be as simple as just reaching out and pulling it off with your hand, snapping the head off. You can do that when they turn entirely brown or you can do it when they just start to fade blousy and start dropping petals. So that's on solitary blooming roses. If you were looking at the ones that are the cluster blooming roses, uh, you're probably better to wait until the whole cluster has turned brown to take it off. Otherwise you can look inside and just pull off one by one, but that's more work. Now if you're doing it just by hand, that's the way you do it, just snapping it off. Or you can do it more precisely with your pruner, and in that case the rule of thumb is that you'll go back to where the leaflet count has gone from three, up where the flower is, back to where it has five leaflets on the leaf. That's classically or rule of thumb wise where where to take it back to to get your best results and to refresh the plant for fresh blooming. The main reason to remove spent blooms, aside from just tidying things up, is to get a faster return to flowering. And a rose like this, this is a Floribunda called Glad Tidings, it will work exactly that way. After removing those flowers, the plant will not be spending its energy on trying to ripen seed pods, but will instead send up fresh new growth that will return to flowering sooner. That is not the case for this rose, Kazanlik, the perfume damask rose from which they get rose perfume. This one will bloom only once in the year, no matter what you do to it. This gorgeous Gallica hybrid is buzzing with bees and scrambling into trees, but one thing it is not is a repeat bloomer. This will only bloom once in the garden and then it's done for the season, so no amount of deadheading will be effort well spent on this rose. As I pan across some of the roses in my garden here, some repeat blooming and some not, let me give you kind of a cheat sheet on the screen of some of the varieties that you can expect to be reblooming and which ones you shouldn't. Now if you're looking at those that rebloom most reliably, the modern roses, things like hybrid teas, floribundas, uh, miniatures, grandifloras and modern climbers are most likely to repeat bloom and thus need deadheading. However, if you're looking at the old garden roses, the gallicas, the albas, the damasks, the centifolias and mosses, those ones do not require deadheading because they're not going to repeat bloom for you anyway. So then the obvious starting point is knowing the identifications and classes of the roses you're working with. If you know the name, if you planted the rose or if you know uh, which rose it is, you can check it on this site, Help Me Find Roses. And on there, it will give you a reference of whether it is a repeat bloomer or a one-time bloomer. I'll show you where on the screen here and also the class that it belongs to. If you don't start out knowing the name of the rose, that's okay. One thing you can do is observe it in the garden and over the course of a season, you'll see whether it initiates flowers over and over again or just does it once first thing in the season. One general assumption you can make, and it's pretty safe, is that modern roses, the ones you find in most garden centers these days, are repeat blooming roses. So if it's brand new rose, uh, that's where I would start out. My assumption is that it's a repeat bloomer. One special case I don't mind saying is to do with the Rugosa roses, like this one, Rosarie de la Haye, where you get an option. It is a repeat bloomer if you deadhead it, but also if you leave it alone, it will develop these beautiful large orange hips that are great for eating and also for wildlife. So it depends on how you want to enjoy the plant in the garden. One compromise is that you can let it bloom out its first flush, deadhead it, and then on its second flush, when it blooms again, you can let those hips ripen in the garden. So in summary, those roses that are repeat blooming like hybrid teas and floribundas, it's probably worth your effort to take off those spent blooms or those clusters of blooms after they've uh, started to fade so that you get more flowers throughout the season. Whereas the one-time bloomers like species roses and old garden roses, not so much. I will mention one last thing in the final summary of this video is that there are some roses like the knockouts I'll use as an example, the modern shrub roses that have been bred to drop their flowers cleanly and start 
flushing all over again without any intervention from you like self-cleaning ovens so in those cases uh, if they drop their blooms cleanly and start blooming again you don't have to lift a finger and those will just be reblooming without deadheading i hope you found this discussion useful and if you have any questions please drop them down in the comments below the video i'll see what i can do to help